Um, so the book which I'm going to review today with you is by Dr. Abdullah Rotman, Developing a Model of Islamic Psychology and Psychotherapy. Islamic theology and, contempor and contemporary understanding of psychology. So this book is quite new. Uh, I believe it was published quite recently. Uh, and by that, I mean probably 2022. So it's a really, really new, uh, new book. However, if I were to disclose my personal feelings, there were quite a few. I was quite excited and I was going through this journey. Uh, uh, a journey of reading this book and probably embracing and re-evaluating informations that are in this small study by Dr. Uh, Rotman. Quite, uh, I was going quite emotionally through, uh, through for this book, and um, my first emotion when I, it was firstly published was like, yes, subhanallah, I can finally read a book by uh, by Dr. Rotman because only uh, the, because only I was raised. I was allowing to be. I was allowing myself as a therapist to be raised by articles uh, by Dr. Rotman, and I really, really, really enjoyed it, uh, and uh, and grew through uh, through them and my and my practice. But also understanding of Islamic psychology and psychotherapy was just uh, just about to sharpen because of of beautiful writing of Dr. Rotman. And um, uh, however, my first emotion, my second emotion after excitement was, why was it so expensive? So this book uh, now uh, came down on price, but it started with 150 pounds, something plus minus. Uh, 150 pounds at that time for me, uh, and probably nowadays as well for uh, for an academic position was uh, was not was not approachable. So so I had to wait for a year for this book to have it in my hands. So that was uh, that was year of longing. And uh, it's finally in my hands. Uh, it didn't took long time, but it, it took, uh, as you can see, uh, quite, uh, quite a journey to finish it. And today I'm going to review it for you, inshallah. And uh, inshallah, uh, if you're watching it uh, and you've never read this book and you've never knew that this book actually exists in the market, I'm sure that you're going to be more than encouraged, more than inspired to reach out for this book. So the first thing comes first. What you need to know about this book is that it is based on uh, small research uh, into real experience, real uh, practical hand-in-hand -hand work with a Muslim psyche. Because what you're going to see, what you're going to hear in this book is actually quotation after quotation uh, of a Muslim therapist and Muslim researchers, right? Muslim researchers, as well as you're going to hear the voice of Dr. Rothman here, obviously, as well. So this book is very much inside therapy book. It presents to you theories, but also it is uh, it, it this book gave a platform for therapists, Muslim and Islamic, especially Islamic therapists, um, to explain and explore and show us how does Islamic psychology work in their practice and what is it that it can be done and how is it that we can improve this this developing subject, okay? Now, um, my third impression after reading this book or maybe throughout this book, really strong impression was, oh my God, we actually do know a lot, okay? So uh, I don't know if you're following it, but I do follow many interviews about Islamic psychology, psychotherapy, and we do have a speakers, not naming them, not pointing a finger who says we don't know nothing, we are still developing, we are still growing, and we don't know how model of the self works. We we still don't know, we're still researching, and this is absolutely not correct. Oh my God, we do know so much and we work with it without having an official uh, a model or official association who actually uh, who actually trains and who actually produces an, uh, an articles. Um, we we don't exist yet in a reputable way, however, in a really effective way. And, and this book explains, it will explain you what are those ways. So uh, so you will go to Nafs and you will go to Ruh and you will go to all those things where which you I'm sure, oh, I hope you did, read uh, from articles of Dr. Rothman. So this book is, I'm not too sure if that's a good uh, or bad actually phenomena about this book. I haven't made my decision yet, but this book will go back to what you already knew from Dr. Rothman, meaning to the model of the self. So 
So if you remember that, um, let me show you. If you if you remember that table, right, uh, about iceberg, uh, so what is apparent is nafs, and underneath we have aqua, uh, uh, gulp, and ruh, um, and how it's uh, and how it translates into our cognition, emotions, and spiritual intelligences. You will have uh, you will have a real treat here because uh, that will be explained through experiences, real life experiences of a therapist. How is it that we that they work with it? Another thing that this book comes back to is to uh, good old uh, what Islam offered to modern self-help paradigm of psychology by uh, by Dr. Model. So Dr. Rothman said so the model of a uh, psycho-spiritual model here explains quite in details what's going on with us uh, from the psychology point of view. Uh, and it's based on body, mind, heart, spirit, and soul. And how this uh, how this can develop us into Musma'ina from Lawama uh, throughout Amara. Uh, and, uh, you know, what is it that we have to go through uh, from the theoretical point of view, those struggles, and how this can translate into, um, uh, into connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end, right? So I'm not going to obviously explain that to you here in this review, but you will find those two here explained and there's plenty of references to it as well. So if uh, if you ever read article, if you ever been raised by lecture of Dr. Rothman, then uh, then you will feel connected. It will be like a continuation. So uh, so what the reason why I said I'm not too sure it's a good or bad thing because you know I was sort of hoping for more tables for more insights graphical insights being kinesthetic and I didn't receive that. However, uh, however, what this book does is more than just working, uh, exploring work with maths, however, it's the center of the book, uh, work with cell code. Uh, uh, it also uh, give you a, examples of, um, of how to carefully thread this path of being Islamic therapist uh, and what is the goal of Islamic psychology nowadays. So let me quote you something, you know, I do like quotes on my reviews. So on page 156, uh, you will find a really lovely quotation, a really, uh, a, a really nice insight into what is it that we call Islamic psychotherapy. So the goal of Islamic psycho psychotherapy as uh, including the removal or the tempering of symptoms of suffering dysfunction or discomfort, but also as helping a client at the same time to understand the potential that exists within the suffering and that within lies the capacity to grow on a deeper level of the soul. SubhanAllah. So this uh, uh, this actually is in the chapter of Jihad on Nerves and how to reconceptualize an idea of Ibtala, which we are all going through, are about to go through uh, from the moment when we are born. And then we also read, so once we, this is actually a quotation from one of the participants, but I think it's really re relevant to the uh, definition of Islamic psychotherapy. Once we get them, meaning clients, to normal functioning, meaning they are free of Amrat al guluk diseases of the heart, and they are free of clinical dysfunctions. Uh, our job is done, but it doesn't have to be, meaning we can still help them uh, internalize McLean al -Aklab, uh, ah -Aklab, like uh, beautification of the character. <clears throat> so over here, we see how Islamic psychology, based on just this ex experience, is touching on Tazkiya and Tarabiya at both times, something that I wrote in my book, something that I actually come across when I was researching as well, this phenomena. And, you know, just on that point, uh, I, I, reading this book, uh, after publishing my book, after doing my research, I realized that subhanAllah, there's uh, so, so, so many similarities, uh, which led me to conclusion that we do actually know a lot. We do actually know a lot and we practice with, with Islamic psychology in a very similar way. And the Islamic or Muslim psychotherapist, it has, it happened, you know, it's already here. Um, so it's definitely time for the next step. So on page 183, we, we learn. Uh, from the perspective of Islamic psychology de definition, uh, that 
the goal of Islamic psychotherapy, uh, as including the removal of tempering, of symptoms of suffering, dysfunction or discomfort, uh, but also having a more central focus on purpose of helping a client to understand the potential that exists within suffering, that uh, within it lies the capacity, the capability to grow on a deeper level in the development of the soul. So, so subhanAllah, uh, this hands table around, isn't it? Instead of just thinking about symptoms, and I think this is quite significant, another discovery uh, after after reading the book, that, that instead of concentrating just on symptoms and symptom removals, we actually looking at potentiality of that person, we connecting with another soul, with our client, uh, at the level of spiritual capacity, and we are aiming to uh, uh, to raise mutmainna with them, for them, within them and for them. So uh, so that is quite a significant uh, discovery, quite significant point in that book. Another thing that I really appreciate and I hope you will appreciate as well is that uh, many, uh, many um, participants here and the author himself, they emphasize that the Islamic psychology or Islamic psychotherapy in current times um, is endangered. Meaning, not that we're going to stop exist, but uh, but actually, uh, but actually, quite uh, on the quite contrary, we're becoming so popular, uh, especially nowadays in social media times and with national health services picking up on uh, on mental health and uh, and uh, diminishing the taboo the, the taboo for us. Now we're becoming endangered uh, with so-called um, idolization as a therapist. So the danger that I'm uh, that I'm uh, that I'm picking up from this book, and I can't disagree with it as well, is that the Islamic psychology might become a tariq, a new pathway, rather than holding on to Quran. Uh, our patients or um, our viewers, right? Because some people still believe that healing can happen from just watching that kind of videos without uh, without a help of a therapist. And that's fine if you are there where you are, but there's more that therapy and healing can offer to you. That's on the side now. Uh, in that certain age, we as Islamic therapists, as Islamic psychology representatives, we can be idolized, and that is uh, that is uh, that is bida. That is also almost like creating a, 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 a sect. You know, a new. It's like almost like sectism. So, uh, and um, therapists uh, in in the words of participants and the author here are encouraged to reevaluate and take themselves to accountability at all times. Like you know, uh, do the reality check. And how it comes across in this book, um, let's read uh, page 106. So this, uh, okay, I'm struggling here to, to present to you uh, the quotation that refers to it directly. Okay, so so um, I'm going to go to uh, to to another page. Sorry, because that is too confusing, and I can't uh, can't really read the whole book for you. I'm sorry. Okay, so I mean, uh, we are not a religious guide. You are not a religious guide as a therapist. Full stop. Therapist means that you know the rules of the human beings and the psychological laws. So you apply or implement accordingly to what you know about the human being, that knowledge will stop. So Islamic psychotherapists' role is not to help them to be better Muslims or understand the religion of Islam better as the primary goal. No. Uh, uh, as, uh, as, as our roles, it is understand that we elevate the, the dysfunctional symptoms and encourage healthy growth. We, uh, we, and we are engaging in aspects of spiritual matters with regards to development of the soul, meaning nafsiani. So, um, so again, uh, you know, we, we as a therapist, we need to take ourselves to to higher level of consciousness and understand that we are not sheikhs, or we are not religious guide, 
And if we are uh, helping, then we're helping mental from the mental health perspective, mental health professional perspective, but we're using religious modality. And that means that the all glory is to God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not his creation, meaning us. Good. So the next point uh, that I uh, that I think is of value to this book is that uh, we uh, we have uh, an access to elaborative elaborated um, insightful uh, dialogue between researcher and a therapist about nafs, nafsiani, jihadul nafs, tahtib akhlaq, building adapt, taskiya, mukhlikat, meaning working with your diseases of the heart as well. Uh, however, there's one confusion which I feel that I need to emphasize, meaning peak of bala. So one of the participants says the Muslim has a complete science fiqh al-bala. If you don't know fiqh bala, you, you can't help a, pa a patient. So fiqh al-bala is the laws and the rules of trust, difficulty, or suffering. And it is a body bodily knowledge within Islamic uh, sciences that details how one is to understand difficulty and test from God. So I I struggle to understand this, but because actually fiqh al-bala is, is, is like an overarching fiqh which explains how is it that in Sharia we're coming to those different rulings, meaning fiqh of marriage, fiqh of uh, salah, and so forth and so forth. However, the bala also have the different meaning, which is tries it to learn how to help with them, but there, it's not covered in fiqh. So it might be it might be um, in the case of me not understanding it. It might be the case that uh, that the uh, the participant meant something else and the author translated into something else. However, this is something that you need to pay attention to uh, because that will come up and I don't want you to feel confused the, uh, the way I did. Uh, and if you hear that it doesn't sit well with me and it doesn't sit well with you, now it's time to research. So Bala, uh, so Bala from, 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 uh, from where I'm standing is actually a fic of not trials and tribulations. And this is what we do. This is what shakes do. Uh, you know, this is what uh, so what imams are doing, working with the suffering, uh, and it's not a fig, it is completely different science. Uh, it's a science of nasiha. Now, another thing, uh, another thing that I want to uh, emphasize is that um, uh, this, and I don't not, not necessarily think that this is a good thing, this book is uh, overly saturated with quotations from Ghazali. It almost feels like it is Ghazali-centered, and, and Ghazali, as we know, has Sufi inclinations, to the point, uh, uh, to the point that uh, it almost feels in that book that uh, mm, therapists are encouraged to uh, to um, to seek a sheikh in order for them to reach the highest uh, the highest points in terms of their professional development uh, to the point where uh, Salafism, meaning Sunnah al uh, Jamaat, they are having a backlash. Uh, and again, uh, let me just go here. Uh, and so on page 186, um, we read, um, so if you're discussing, uh, if you're discussing clinical or serious illnesses or mental health, uh, this could give a rise to notion that if one is faced with difficulty or psychological suffering, the answer is simply to concern ourselves with ability uh, by and aligning one behavior with the outward religious obligations and prescriptions uh, prescriptions as to cure for inner psychological struggle. Such Zahiri interpretations like that of Salafi schools of thought have to the, have the potential of triggering OCD and anxiety in that these approaches tend to be overly focused on following a detailed prescriptive specification of ritual behaviors such as voodoo. Whereas a uh, Batini or perhaps Sufi orientation would also accept the adherence to the outward prescriptions to the world uh, and so forth. So, you know, over here, um, uh, so over here, I um, it's not it, it's not the case of opening discussion, but I want to draw your uh, attention to the fact that you will have books written about Islamic psychology from the Ahl Sunnah, a Salafi point of view and Sufi point of view. And this is one of those positions which, uh, which, shows, uh, which shows the difference 
and you might appreciate or less appreciate that for those for those reasons. However, that what I've just quoted is quite out there. It's quite brave, I believe. And uh, you won't find in this book also, and that was something that was missing to me, uh, many quotations of Quran to, and, and, re and re re references to Quran or Sunnah. You will find some, but not many. You won't find case studies. You know, it's always good to read case studies to actually feel it, experience it, uh, almost as you are there with the client or with the therapist in the room. Um, however, he, however, uh, this position is one of the best positions in the market, and uh, for the reasons that I mentioned already, my personal, but also um, I think um, uh, professional, I would recommend this book to any Muslim Islamic therapist uh, and anyone who is a researcher as well. It is on high level, uh, but it's a, it's a real delight. and. Please, if you like this video, put a thumb up on YouTube. Stay tuned, stay signed to uh, my channel, agstherapy.com, for more videos like this, as well as book a free consultation if you want to discuss your personal growth, achieving your higher potential, just like uh, explored here, like going to the highest potential, highest, highest level of Islamic psychology and psych psychotherapy by working with your highest potential. I offer free consultation. It doesn't get better than this. Uh, thank you so much for your for your time and until the next one. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.